accruals and prepayments. An accrued expense is an expense that was due to be paid during the financial year of the business, but was not paid. Expenses owing at the end of the financial year are called accruals or other payables. The matching principle or concept states that expenses for the current year and for the current year only, whether paid or not, should be matched with revenue for the current year and the current year only, whether received or not. If, for example, annual rent on the business's premises is $1,000 and only $900 has been paid by the business, then $100 is still owing and is therefore accrued. This $100 has to be included in the year's expenses as a charge against the profits in the income statement as per the matching principle. It is also treated as current liability in the statement of financial position. Let us now look at accrued income. Accrued income is income that has been earned by the business but remains unpaid at the end of the current financial year. Accrued income should be included as income in the income statement and is treated as a current asset in the statement of financial position. Let us now look at prepayments. A prepaid expense is an expense paid in advance. When expenses for the following financial year are paid in the current financial year, this expense is termed a prepayment for other receivables. For example, if the annual rent due on premises is $1,000 and the rent paid was $1,200, then $200 has been paid in advance by the business for the next financial year and should not be included in this year's expenses as per the matching principle. This prepaid expense is treated as a current asset in the statement of financial position. Let us now look at prepaid income. Prepaid income is income that has been paid in advance to the business. Prepaid income should not be included as income in the income statement as per the matching principle. It should, however, be included as a current liability in the statement of financial position. Steps to draw up expenses and income accounts. Step one, always get the financial year right. Remember that a year is made up of 12 months. Step two, Look for all the figures given in the question. If one of the figures refers to the start of the year, then it is a balance brought down. If the balance brought down is an expense owing from last year, then it will be entered on the credit side of the expense count. The following table will be very helpful. If the balance brought down is an expense that has been accrued, it will be entered on the credit side of the expense account. If the accrual is an income, it will be entered on the debit side of the income account. However, if the figure is a prepayment and an expense, then it will be entered on the debit side of the expense account. If the prepayment is a prepaid income, it will be entered on the credit side of the income account. Step three, if the figure refers to what has been paid or received during the year, then remember a payment will always appear on the debit side of an account and a receipt will always appear 
on the credit side of an account. Step 4. If the figure refers to the end of the year or a balance carried down, let us go back to the table and look at closing balances. If the figure is an expense that has accrued, it will be entered on the debit side of the expenses account. If the figure is a prepayment, then it will be entered on the credit side of the expenses account. However, if the figure is an income that has accrued, it will be entered on the credit side of the income account. If the figure is an income that has been prepaid, it will be entered on the debit side of the income account. Step 5. The new financial year. Don't forget to bring down your balances in the new financial year. Whatever you have carried down in the previous financial year should always be brought down in the new financial year. There are two templates given on the right of the slide. Memorize them. They come in very handy for you to attempt questions on expenses and income accounts, which include accruals and prepayments. Most important of all, don't forget to memorize the table on the left. Here is an example adapted from a past paper. Noor, a sole trader, was preparing her business's financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2018. Remember step one, get your financial year right. Since her year ended on the 31st of December 2018, it should have started on the 1st of Jan 2018. You are given the following information. At 1st Jan 2018, general expenses were prepaid $480. This is an opening balance. Since it is an expense and a prepayment, it would be entered on the debit side of the general expenses account. There are no more opening balances. Further information. During the year ended 31st December 2018, general expenses paid was 12,400. This is step two. During the year, payments are entered on the debit side. Therefore, general expenses of 12,400 is entered on the debit side of the general expenses account. Similarly, insurance premiums paid 6,480 is entered on the debit side of the insurance account. Rent received, however, of 5,460 will be entered on the credit side of the rent receivable account. Further information, at 31st December 2018, general expenses of 1,210 were due but unpaid. These are accruals. Therefore, it will be entered on the debit side of the general expenses account. It is a closing balance. Balance carried down 1,210. It is not so straightforward to work out the insurance premiums either paid, accrued or prepaid at the end of the year. The information that you're given for insurance is insurance premiums paid include $630 covering six months ended 31st of Jan 2019. You will notice that the insurance premium has been paid for an extra month as the year ended on the 31st of December. Let's look at the working. Working one. Insurance premium prepaid is therefore equal to one 
divided by the six months times 630, and therefore $105 was prepaid as insurance premium. Let's go to the insurance premium account. The balance carried down. Since it is a prepayment, it will be entered on the credit side of this expense account, the insurance account, $105, working one. Further information, rent receivable of 1,200 for the three months ended 28th of Feb, 2019 had not been received. This is an income that is accrued. Working backwards, we see that the three months include February, January of 2019, and December of 2018. Therefore, the accrual that will be included according to the matching principle will only be that of December 2018, and that is one month out of the three months. Looking at the working, rent receivable accrued, working number two, is equal to one divided by three times 1,200, which is equal to $400. Let's look at the rent receivable account. The closing balance will be recorded on the credit side. Balance carried down, accrual, $400. Let us now balance each account separately. The balancing figure is the expense or the income for the financial year ended 31st December 2018. When we balance the general expenses account, the balancing figure is $14,090. This is an expense which will be charged to the income statement as an expense for general expenses for the year ended 31st December 2018. Let's look at the insurance account. When we balance the insurance account, the amount of 6,375 is the balancing figure. This is the amount of insurance that will be charged to the profits as an expense for insurance in the income statement. Let us now balance the rent receivable account. On balancing, the figure is 6,260. This is the rent receivable for the year ended 31st December 2018 and will appear as an income in the income statement as per the matching principle. As I mentioned in the last slide, don't forget to bring down the balances in the new financial year. Let's look at general expenses. The balance carried down on the 31st of December 2018 was 1,210. Therefore, that is now the balance brought down, 1,000 210 on the 1st of Jan 2019. Similarly, the balance carried down in the insurance account was 105 balance carried down a prepayment. It will be carried down to the debit side of the insurance account on January 1st. The balance carried down in the rent receivable account, which was an accrual, was $400. We will now bring down that balance on the 1st of Jan 2019, $400. This example has been taken from my book, Revising AS Accounting, A Study Guide. More information about this book and other books that I have written appear in the last two slides of this presentation. Let us now look at the example. Corina's financial year ends on the 30th of June, 20-3. The trial balance on that day included the following. Rent, a debit of $750. Insurance, a debit of 
and rates a debit of 140. Since they are all debits, they are expenses. Further information, at 30th June 20-3, Corina owed $45 for insurance and $30 for rates. These are accruals. As per the matching principle, they have to be included as expenses in this year's income statement. Let's look at further information. $80 of the rent was prepaid. This is a prepayment and as per the matching principle, should not be included in the expenses in the income statement for this financial year. Let us look at the solution. Corina's income statement for the year ended 30th June 20-3 extract. Gross profit is not given. Less expenses, you've got rent, $750 that was paid, out of which $80 was a prepayment for the next financial year and therefore should be subtracted as per the matching principle to give us a total of $670 as expenses for rent in this financial year ended 30th June 20 Rates, 140 was paid during the year, but at the end of the financial year, $30 was still owing and therefore has to be included as an expense for rates in this financial year. 140 plus 30 gives us a total of $170 that will be charged as rates in the income statement for the year ended 30th June 20-3. Similarly, insurance paid during the year $50, whereas $45 was still owing at the end of the year. That will be added to give us a total of $95 as expenses for insurance for the year ended 30th of June 20-3. Let us now look at Corina's statement of financial position as at 30th June 20-3, only an extract. We will only look at the current assets and the current liabilities, which are the two are things that are affected. Current assets, we haven't been given an inventory. Trade receivables, we haven't been given in, uh, trade receivables. Other receivables, in this case, is a prepayment, and that would be rent, $80. Current liabilities, under other payables, you have the two accruals of $30 for rates and $45 for insurance. Therefore, the total other payables under the heading current liabilities is $75 for the year ended 30th June 20-3. More information about AS Accounting, a study guide. The content of this book matches the latest CRE AS syllabus and is pitched at a level that is extremely workable. The book is written by a qualified and experienced teacher and fills the need for a guide that is solely meant for the CRE AS Accounting course. Some salient features of the book are it unpacks the CIE AS accounting syllabus, IAS terminology has been used, students love the unique question and answer presentation of theory, there are numerous tips for success and exhaustive exercises for practice. This book is available at most book outlets worldwide including Book Depository and Amazon. They are available in hard copy as well as in ebook format. Here are other titles available. AS Accounting Workbook, a write-in workbook that will help you prepare for your examinations and revising A-level accounting. Please contact me at junebaptister at hotmail.com for more information and for answers.